The ACC championship could be decided in South Bend tonight. Notre Dame and number five Virginia Tech meeting at Purcell Pavilion. The Hokies one win away from history. It would be their first ACC regular season crown. This is the ACC on ESPN and right now nine ACC teams are expected to go to the NCAA tournament. It's a monster. Here's a look at the top six. Now Virginia Tech can win the ACC outright tonight. They're already the number one seed for the conference tournament. Notre Dame is still vying for one of the top four spots and the all important double bye heading into Greensboro. Hi everybody. Thanks for joining us. Dave O'Brien along with Stephanie White and also the great Holly Road joining us in just a couple of moments. It is rare, Steph, when you can say truthfully three of the best players in America are clashing on the same floor tonight. Certainly the case. Let's start with Virginia Tech. Amor and Kitley, just a dynamic duo. Absolutely, one of the best duos in the country, and it starts in the middle with Liz Kitley. Her patented turnaround jump shot, her ability to be in multiple positions and be moved around the floor, get out of double teams, and her partner in crime. When you think about Georgia Amor, they just have this synergy about them, understanding how and when to get one another. The ball dynamic in the two man, but Georgia Amor can score it a little bit too. That patented step back from the three. She creates a ton of separation and lots of opportunities to make the big shot. They even host a podcast together. That's how tight they are. But look at this, 41 points combined, which is number four in Division One. Hannah Hidalgo started her career for Notre Dame by scoring 31 points in her very first college game against South Carolina. She's only gotten better since then. Yes, yeah, she has. She started out and she has not looked back. One of the most intense competitors in the country. She can score at all three levels, the mid-range, getting to the paint, knocking it down from three, getting her teammates involved. She has continued to get better throughout the course of the season, but right there, the best thing that she does, she leads the nation in steals and sets a tone for this Irish defense. Five steals a game, remarkable. So Amor and Hidalgo, two great point guards. For more on them, let's bring in Holly Rowe. Well, last night I literally could not sleep anticipating this matchup. I've been waiting for months to see Hannah Hidalgo and Georgia Amor go against each other. These are two of the feistiest, fiery competitors in college basketball and most phenomenal guards at their position. Georgia Amor is from Australia. Think of Aussie rules football meets Jersey girl. They are going to be tough, hard nosed. Georgia leads the ACC in assists. Hannah Hidalgo in steals. Let's see who gets the better of each other tonight. I think it's going to be an epic matchup. I think you're right, Holly. We're going to see a lot of scoring tonight, too, with these two lineups. And let's get right to it for Virginia Tech and for Notre Dame. And the Finding Irish starting five, Hidalgo, DeWolf, Citron, Westbeld, and Watson. Notre Dame getting 81 points a game. And for the Hokies, well, this is a very powerful lineup as well with two All-Americans in Kitley and Amor. Certainly, they are going to be candidates for All-America this season. Kitley averaging 23 points a game, Amor 18, not to mention seven assists. And we are underway as the Hokies win the opening tip. And overall, they're 23 and four. Of course, national semifinalists last year and ranked number five in the country. And the season ended last year, they were number four. Amor on the baseline. Well, you got a mismatch right here. An opportunity for Amor to attack. She will down the lane, airborne, but it won't drop for her. And a rebound to the Irish. Well, that was a heck of a job by Kylie Watson of staying in front. Hidalgo quickly strikes. That didn't take long no. to light this place up. She is so good at getting downhill. And, you know, Kenny Brooks talked about trying to force her left, but she sets you up so well and gets to the rim. Leading the ACC in scoring at 24 points a game, not to mention six rebounds and five and a half assists. She absolutely does it all. Kitley trying to work out of the double. Gets it free to King and will knock it down, Kayla King. And always a great sign when Kayla King knocks down a three-point shot. If you're going to dig off of Kayla King, Liz Kitley's going to find her. Shoots a lot of three-pointers. A six-foot grad and putting the Hokies out in front. Expecting a lively crowd here tonight in South Bend. And a block by Kitley. And Virginia Tech. 
on the offensive attack. Kitley has it knocked away. Hidalgo with her first theft of the contest. Weaving and kicking. Notre Dame, one of the nine teams expected to go to the NCAA tournament. The most in the country of any conference. The question is, where are they going to finish in the regular season getting it downstairs? Westfeld with the strike. Maddie Westfeld coming in, averaging 14 to 9. And Maddie Westfeld has started every game of her career with Neil Ivey here as the head coach. She really understands. Neil Ivey talks all the time about she's the glue of this team. Loose ball up top, but it'll be collected by the Hokies. Amor in the corner. Eck will swing it. Somebody will swish that one in. Nice touch from three-point land. Yeah, this is a team in Virginia Tech that leads the ACC and made three three-point field goals, making sure you can recover to shooters, making sure the right people are taking the shots that you want to if you're the Irish on defense. Watson trying to make a move into the lane. Tough shot. Westbeld right back up, drops in two. So tough on the glass. Her 112th consecutive start at Notre Dame. An absolute rock. And she's got such great touch around the rim. Kitley handing off for Amor. Again, kicks it out, but that's going to be picked off, stolen by DeWolf. In transition, trying to make a move, and great defense by King to hold her up for making the layup. Citron launching, and that didn't touch anything. Well, the Irish, of course, will not repeat as ACC champs, but still plenty to play for and they get a big game on their home floor. They come in ranked number 19. Or rather number 17 on the pole. Kick out up top. Now back inside for Kitley. She goes to work. That's going to be blocked. Great stop by Watson. Hidalgo wriggling free and a block by Amor on the other end. And the Hokies come up with a loose ball. Terrific individual defensive efforts on both ends of the floor. Amor looked to step back and fire a three. Couldn't get that one off. She'll fire way downtown and it won't drop for her. Rebounded by Citron. Citron missed nine games this season because of a sprained knee. A little fall away won't fall for her. One and done for the Irish. Notre Dame with a lot of injury problems and still managed to win at this point 21 games. Kind of a sloppy start. The Wolf will fire this one for Hidalgo and makes the shot. And she'll be headed to the line looking for a three-point play. And this is what the Irish do. They force almost 20 turnovers a ball game. They get out in transition. That is when they're at their best. Great little head and shoulder fake by Hannah Hidalgo. Strong finish. Hidalgo, the 5'6 freshman. Needs a trophy room solely for her freshman season. Just won her 11th ACC Rookie of the Week honor. And just named to the Ann Myers Drysdale National Player of the Year watch list. And just piling up the plaques and the trophies. And there's been so much thrown on Hannah Hidalgo throughout the course of this season. No Olivia Miles the entire season. So the Citron goes down early. A lot on her shoulders. She's handled it so well. And now you're starting to see the Irish get back into some chemistry and continuity that they've been missing throughout the course of the year. Grab a 9-6 lead. Amor stops. Kitley squaring up. Jump shot will clang in for Strack. 6-5 freshman. Remember Kenny Brooks talking about it earlier this season that Strack is a player who is going to be a great player. And multiple times Kenny Brooks talking about trying to get Claire Strack and, and Liz Kitley on the floor at the same time. And think about the opportunity she has to go against Kitley every day in practice. Now both sides piling up early turnovers. Virginia Tech with a third. On the drive, slithering inside, Matilda Eck for two. Kevin averaging 11 points per game. And also started this with just 13 points from 1,000 in her career. 
Westbelt will fire and swish that one in. Nice touch. Maddie Westbelt's just so poised. She takes what the defense gives her. She sizes it up. Westbelt missed the North Carolina loss with a concussion. That one was 61 to 57 and a lay in by Eck on the other end. And I love how Virginia Tech is moving multiple pieces around, getting Matilda Eck to the rim. You certainly understand that Liz Kitley is going to get her touches, but the more involved everyone else gets, the easier it becomes for Liz Kitley. Well spelled again. That one clangs away. Notre Dame actually coming into this particular game with the number 10 net ranking, which is the highest in the ACC to this point. Kitley with a high post. Gave up the dribble. And looking for help. Amor always to the rescue off the fake. And a foul on the play. Citron with the personal. 3.06 to go here in the first. And a tight one early. Huge news out of Iowa today. Caitlin Clark has announced she is declaring for the WNBA draft. And Holly Rowe, you were just with Caitlin last night, weren't you? Yeah, I tried to casually say, hey, so what are you thinking for senior day? And <laughs> she did say she has a lot of friends and family that will be there. She wants to celebrate the other four seniors on her team. But obviously, she said in her statement today that she still has a lot of goals to achieve for Iowa. They want to go deep in the NCAA tournament. She is 18 points away from breaking Pete Maravich's record, which we expect to fall on Sunday in Iowa City. So there is a lot still left to play for for Caitlin Clark, but I'm sure that this will take a lot of um, uncertainty out of it, that people know what her future holds, and she can now focus on NCAA tournament. WNBA draft, Monday, April 15, 7.30 on ESPN. Steph, is she making the right decision? I think so. You know, it, there are so many things that um, that Caitlin Clark has already accomplished as a college athlete. And think about the team that will return for Iowa next year versus the opportunity that she has to, to take her game to a different stage and play against the best players in the world. In fact, I made a comment earlier in the season if Caitlin Clark might be bored with college basketball because she can just do whatever she wants whenever she wants. About to eclipse Pistol Pete Maravich. As the all-time scorer, she is the biggest star in the game. It's going to be sad to see her leave the college ranks, but it'll be really exciting to see what she does next, you know? And I know those Indiana Fever fans are awfully excited. Hidalgo with a sweet touch. She's had 22 games of 20 points or more in her freshman season. We were talking to Neil Ivey about the great point guards in Notre Dame. Where does she rank already? And she said, certainly in the top four or five already at Notre Dame. Yeah, I don't think there's any question. I mean, she's a special, special talent as Liz Kitley continues to, to go to work. And I think what's most impressive is how hungry she is to learn. The Ivy watches every game with her after the game. They're talking about the subtleties of, of reads and getting players in positions to be successful and changing speeds and changing pace. We're not talking about setting the tone. She's already got that. Of course, Neil Levy was a great point guard in her own right at Notre Dame. But she said, you know, I was a pass first point guard. There are different kinds. West Belt, nice follow. She's off to a nice start here in the opening quarter. Well, the game has changed a lot since Neil Ivy was a point guard. You've got scoring point guards, Hidalgo. Skylar Diggins-Smith was one of those scoring point guards that played here at Notre Dame. Long one by King. Can't hit it. Notre Dame digs out the rebound. Irish trying to retake the lead, and they're going to do it on a quick strike by Bransford. And another lead change. We've already had eight of them in this game. That was a terrific pass by Anna DeWolf in transition. Amor can't knock it down. The rebound by DeWolf. She has a terrific three-point eye herself. She had 24 against Florida State. Six triples. And in traffic, that's going to be a traveling violation by Marshall. And here's our next ESPN NBA Friday doubleheader. Jason Tatum and the Celtics taking on the Mavs, 7.30 Eastern time on Friday. And then the Bucks squaring off against the Chicago Bulls. Coverage begins with NBA countdown at 7 o'clock Eastern.
The defensive energy and intensity by the Irish has been impressive here early. They're active, they're aggressive, they're communicating, forcing the Hokies to be uncomfortable. Kitley is making the 150th start of her career tonight with a misfiring close. Two time ACC player of the year. And the last seconds of the quarter with Notre Dame by one, trying to add to that. Citron off the dribble. Westbell gets a look around and out. A oh, great job underneath. That will not fall for Bransford as the horn sounds to end the first quarter. And when we come back, we'll talk to Kenny Brooks. Virginia Tech head coach right around the corner. Well, the Hokies have been hot this month. In fact, they ripped up 10 straight overall, but this month, seven wins for Kenny Brooks. And just playing lights out in the ACC. They've been unbeatable at home, of course. Kitley, 27 points a game for the month. And Amor has also been terrific with the dish at nine per game. And Holly Rowe with Kenny Brooks moments ago. Well, Coach, there's been a lot of back and forth in the score right now. You just pulled your center aside, Liz Kitley. What is her message to her right now? Well, she needs to open up a little bit and see where the double teams are coming from. I think she's just rushing a little bit. But I think we all are. You know, it's exciting in here. Uh, we just need to settle down, take our time, and we'll be okay. Notre Dame's gotten back in transition a little bit. You guys are slowing the pace. What's the ideal pace for you in this game right now? Yeah, we need to be efficient. You know, when we have a six foot six All American, you want to wait for her to let her get down the floor. But we also need to take advantage of our opportunities. So we'll do that. We'll just see what happens. Uh, but we just need to settle down a little bit. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. I, I love that reminder, by the way. Liz Kitley, six six. Let's wait for her, <laughs> right? That's right. Bring her down. She's been quite dominant throughout her tenure. For the Hokies. Last couple of seasons they have loved February. 21 and 1. Uh, Notre Dame off to a quick start as we begin the second quarter. Hidalgo already with 10. And that's a challenge with Hannah Hidalgo. She's so good at getting to the rim and so good at breaking down the D. You give up the three point shot, right? You pick your poison, but when she's knocking that down, she's virtually unstoppable. Came in 20 points away from the ACC rookie scoring record among all the other records she has captured. Amor on the penetration, and that rolls off the iron. I love what Notre Dame is doing on the defensive end. That's a heck of a play right there by Georgia Amor. Tough and gritty, and takes the hit. Lana Dalgo is in constant motion, and there you see the little inverted on-ball screen where she's setting it for their post player, and then the pop action wide open, and look at that intensity. Holly? Well, Coach kept saying, we need to settle down. We need to settle down. He brought up a great point today. Virginia Tech has not played Notre Dame since a year ago in December. They have played in that same span, North Carolina, five times. So the familiarity of what is happening now, he said, this almost feels like a non-conference game. And you can sense that, like they've just got to settle down and figure out the personnel right now. And there's no substitute for the type of pressure that a player like Hannah Hidalgo brings and what the Irish are doing on the off defensive end. As <laughs> Maddie Westbell hits another three. The senior from Kettering, Ohio, has 11. Came in averaging 14. They're letting her shoot it. Amor look for the bounce speed and a kick. 8.28 to go here before halftime. Maddie Westfield just never gets rushed. Again, she's sizing up her defense. You can tell that the defender, Samuel, is going to go under the screen, and she just rises up and takes it in rhythm. And has shown up against really good opponents. She had 15 and 11 against Tennessee. 15 and 15 against Boston College, 15 and 14 against Pitt. So across the board against all comers, some massive games. Russell gave it up. In transition again, Westbell draws the foul and lays it in. She'll be off to the line. Look at her three-point play. Again, the activity, activity level defensively. Kylie Watson continues to move her feet. That allows the Irish to do what they do best and get out in transition. 16 points in the paint already in this ball game for Notre Dame. Notre Dame battle tested too. They won at UConn. They faced number one South Carolina. 
ESPN bracketology has Notre Dame as a number five seed in the NCAA tournament as of this moment. They don't back down from anybody. 26 18 on top. And a foul away from the ball. Coming up on Sunday, ACC Network will cap the women's basketball regular season a quadruple header. Starting at noon, the featured matchups Miami and Georgia Tech. That's a two. Then Clemson and Florida State, and we cap the day with number five Virginia Tech squaring off against Virginia. Right now they're trying to regroup here in South Bend. Kitley off a great fake. Rolls into the lane. Well, she's getting some good look steps. She's not finishing. No, and I think the Irish are doing such a good job of keeping her off balance. Like Kenny Brooks said in, in his interview with Holly, she's rushing a little bit, doesn't know where the double team is coming from. Notre Dame with a 13 to 2 run. And Elaine Watson. And she's going to give that one away in a traveling violation. So the turnover is even at four. Kitley on the entry. Amor back to her and a reach and a foul on Notre Dame. That'll go on Watson. And, and not only is Liz Kitley not getting the ball with two feet in the paint, but look at where the Hokies are making their passes from, well beyond the three point line. The perimeter defenders for the Irish just doing such a good job of forcing catches beyond the three point line. Yeah, Kitley a long way away from the basket several times. Back fires. Not there. One and done. Notre Dame, a high octane offense because of Hidalgo off the window, but no. Amor came in 11 assists away from yet another record. Had 11 against North Carolina to set the program record at Virginia Tech. Back with a shot clock down to 12. And another travel. Tight deep for the Irish. Five turnovers now for the Hokies. Just terrific defensive pressure. You know, taking Virginia Tech out of any kind of offensive rhythm that, that they can get. You know, Kenny Brooks is so good in X's and O's and look for him to, to run a little bit more of the screen, rescreen action, getting Elizabeth Kitley some more off ball screens to bring her to the rim. Well, Hokies won the ACC tournament last year. Played that all the way to the final four. They on the same road again. They are the number one seed in the upcoming ACC tournament. They can clinch the conference outright here tonight. Hidalgo gives it up. Marshall shot right on the money. A 15 to two run. And now a 10 point advantage. And you can see the Irish, they're not allowing Georgia Amor to come off of the on ball screens. They're icing it. They're switching if they're coming up and turning it into a step up. Kayla King got a good look from three point land, could not knock that down. And on a step through, but no. They'll get a second effort. The Wolf will swing it. The dog will back outside. And another rebound. They'll get a third chance and a whistle and a foul here against the Hokies. It's amazing watching Hannah Hidalgo move around the floor because wherever the ball is in flight or being dribbled, she's right there. She absolutely is. She's in constant motion, great instinct, great understanding of finding open space. The Irish right now just making all the hustle plays. Five thirty five before the break here in South Bend, Indiana. And again, this little thing right here, just the growth in Hannah Hidalgo, making sure everybody's in the right space to start offense. Long jumper around and out by Westbell. She's been feeling it here in the first half. Amor slowing down the tempo a little bit. That's something that Kenny just talked with Holly about. And on the drive, no. Plenty of these layups just aren't falling yet for the Hokies. Hidalgo slicing through, lay it in. 
She was just a blur on that play. So explosive and such a terrific finisher around the rim. Notre Dame on top 30-18. Look at the fast break points dominating their 10 zip. And that will go against the Hokies. Another foul, 30-18. Well, Hannah Hidalgo is terrific in transition. That is a tough, tough finish. You know, they're known as guard you here at Notre Dame. Those step you talked about it, guard you, Notre Dame. That's what they are known for. Skyler Diggins, one of the great players all time in Notre Dame. Joel Lloyd, 2012-2015, spectacular. Lindsey Allen as well on that list of all-timers. I mean, on and on it goes, certainly. And they've got another one in Hannah Hidalgo, Jackie Young. And for more and a special guest, let's toss it to Holly Rowe. Well, I am here with one of the legendary guards to ever step on this floor, Jewel Lloyd. And Jewel, this is really special. What is it like for you when you come home and the love you receive here? You know, it's, uh, it's nice to be uh, back in a place where I kind of started my career. Um, I always have great, uh, you know, admiration for people who support me. Uh, so it's nice to be uh, to be back and be here with uh, Jordan as well. You're here with Jordan Horston, your teammate for the Seattle Storm. You are reunited with Skylar Diggins-Smith, someone you played with here at Notre Dame. How is that going to be for the Storm this season? I'm super excited. Uh, Skylar and I have known each other for many years. Um, I know her really well. She knows me really well. Uh, we're hopefully get some more alley hoops in uh, this season. Oh my gosh, the Julie hoops. Remember, we used to love those. Oh, um, it's really cool. This is your first time seeing Hannah Hidalgo play in person. What are your impressions? Yeah, she's spicy. Um, really quick. She brings a lot of energy. Uh, this building definitely needs it, so uh, she definitely brings it. Does she belong in guard you? We just showed all the legendary guards. Is she worthy? Yeah, you know, uh, she definitely is. She's slept the mark. She's doing things that freshmen shouldn't be able to do, and um, uh, she's looking, making it look pretty easy. All right, well, we cannot wait. We will see you on the court for the Seattle Storm. As courts, you are just doing great things in the W. Thank you, Joel. Thanks, Holly. I remember the Julie Oops. Oh, yeah. So does Holly Rowe. <laughs> Very excited to hear about, well, 30-18 Notre Dame. They're dominating on the glass right now. Foul just went against Olivia Sumiel, the 6-2 grad for the Hokies. So everything is going Notre Dame's way at the moment. And coming out of the timeout, Kenny Brooks electing to change defenses. Go to the 2-3 zone. They are having trouble containing the Irish off the bounce. So change it up a little bit. Try to keep Notre Dame out of some kind of rhythm on the offensive end. Hidalgo just too quick. Too quick. That first step is deadly. And she has 14. And no Hokey player has more than four points. And they missed eight of their last nine. And look at that pressure. I mean, the incredible ball pressure. And there's another block. This one by Westfeld. She got her hand on it. Well, you mentioned it. The first step by Hannah Hidalgo. She gets right by the defender. And that subtlety right there, getting into the defender to create the space. And Maddie Westfeld on rotation, able to get the block. Kane trying to get free. Shot clock down to three. Eck has to fire it. And another whistle on the floor with 3.12 to go. In the second, and the Irish with a 32-18 lead coming up at halftime. NCAA top 16 seeds are revealed. And Caitlin Clark's big decision. And she reached that decision, made that decision today. Trying to get Kitley going. The All-American forced it. Four points so far for Kitley. Marshall will give it up here for Hidalgo, coming in 24 points per game, weaving her way in, seemingly can get her shot whenever she wants it. She really can. She does such a great job of getting to her spots, of changing her pace, getting her reads. But I've been so impressed with the Irish on the defensive end of the floor. I, I would venture to say this is their best defensive half of basketball all season long. Bounce free to Kitley. Got it. She switched it in, and they needed that hoop badly. They had missed seven in a row over six minutes. The Irish by 12 on their home floor and will retain possession. Irish, 
And a DeWolf back on. And KK Bransford will take a seat. 5'11 sophomore to the bench. And David's impressive. The Irish are doing this. And Sonia Citron hasn't made a field goal yet. Abor up ahead will lay it up and in. This has been a great guard matchup to watch just as Holly was promoting it. Abor and Hidalgo, two of the very best in the country. The senior against the freshman. And right now, the freshman's had the upper hand. Westbell. And the Irish one and done. Here's Kayla King. Hey, more again with the bounce for Kitley and no. She's had an up and down half. It'll stay on this end. Knocked out by Notre Dame. Well, nothing has come easy. She's had to work just to get shots off. And a lot of those, she's had one open shot the entire half so far. We saw her earlier this season in Baton Rouge in LSU. And she had the same kind of struggles. Amor, no problem there. Absolutely drills it. Give her seven. She's now made a three in every game this season. Yeah, at least one. So they have crept a little bit closer, the Hokies have. Inside a minute here in the second quarter. On the feed underneath, and a whistle and a foul against the Hokies. So now it's been the Hokies' turn to get a run going, 7 0 to close the gap, and Notre Dame will be at the line. Natalia Marshall. There's an outstanding offensive rebounder at 6-5. These are both really good foul shooting teams. Yeah, they absolutely are. And I felt like that was really good execution by the Irish, working that high-low, working that free throw line area against the zone. Now Hokies make 78%, the Irish 77%. 34-25. Amor being harassed by Hidalgo somehow got out of there. Eck will let fly. Hit it. Three-pointer. Until the Eck with a triple. This is the best three-point shooting team by percentage and in terms of makes in the ACC. Getting out to shooters quickly is important. So just when it looked like Notre Dame was going to build a really big lead, and the Hokies come back with a 10-2 run right before halftime. Brantford. Westbell, who's had an excellent first half. The Wolf in the paint, and knocks it down. Chance for a heave here. Amor will get it off, airborne but short. And that's the first half of play. Notre Dame fired up. They lead it 36 to 28. An outstanding defensive effort by the Irish. It allowed them to do what they do best and get in transition. Let's go to Holly. Well, Hannah, Virginia Tech's already locked up the ACC championship. How have you guys not let that intimidate you and you come out and taking it right at them? Yeah, we just come out and play every game like it's our last game. We want to win, so it doesn't matter what it is. They've got on a little bit of a run. What has to change defensively to get back on track? You know, basketball is a game of run, so we just stick to the plan and just come back how we started. All right, thank you so much. No defense rebounding and number three there for Notre Dame. Hannah Hidalgo with 14, living up to her outstanding billing coming in as we go to our Jeep halftime report with Kelsey Dre and Charlie. Notre Dame delighted to be at home and they are playing really well a 36 28 lead over number five Virginia Tech Dave O'Brien and Seth White with you and Hannah Hidalgo lived up to everything we raved about as we came on the air she had 14 points our all state mayhem moment the freshman was terrific well she certainly caused a lot of mayhem on the defensive end of the floor this is what she does she brings the intensity she sets the tone she hassles her her opponents and she's just incredibly active, her hands, her feet, and that allows Notre Dame to do what they do best and get out in transition. And she's one on five here. She explodes past multiple defenders, able to finish in traffic, the little in and out, getting to the rim. She makes it look so easy, but when you think you've got her cut off, you want to force her left, she can hit the pull up too. 
one on five. I think she likes the odds, right? And our star stories brought to you by Home Depot. 14 for her, and Westbelt was outstanding with 14 and seven. On the other side, the star stories for the Hokies. They need more from their stars. Amor and Kimley, they combine to shoot five for 17 from the field staff, and that is very unusual. It absolutely is, and you have to give a ton of credit to this Notre Dame defense for keeping them out of rhythm and off balance. But this is an experienced Hokies team, so you expect them to come out of this second half looking to execute and get some high percentage looks. Irish with the ball and a quick strike by Citron. You were talking about she needed to pick it up here in the second half and right out of the game. It was impressive what they were doing without Sonia Citron making a field goal, but getting her involved is going to be important. She's 16 points a game, and that'll be a kick ball in the opening seconds of the second half. Notre Dame with a 10-point lead, trying to pick up their 22nd win. They are in the hunt for a top four spot in the ACC tournament coming up in Greensboro, which means a double bye into the quarterfinals. Which is so critical when it comes to putting yourself in a position to win a conference tournament championship. And they're also in the hunt for a top four seed in the NCAA tournament, so each win an opportunity to improve those odds. Amor with a pull, but that's going to roll out. And just a choppy looking offensive performance so far for Virginia Tech. Yeah, we're used to seeing them in great rhythm, um, in sync. They're going to come out, they're going to stay in this 2 3 zone that was fairly effective for them in that second quarter. Irish coming in, rank number 17. And the jump shot will not drop. Kitley coming away with a rebound. We'll see if the second half belongs to Liz Kitley. Just named the ACC Player of the Week for the fourth consecutive week and the sixth time this season. Well, the physicality on the interior, forcing Liz Kitley off the block. Hidalgo with a theft. Down the lane, taking it in strong, undaunted. She went down hard, too. As she drew the foul, and she'll be headed to the line. Well, the physicality on the interior, Maddie Westbelt, Kylie Watson, both of them doing an outstanding job of getting Liz Kidley off the block, of forcing her out of her comfort zone. And when she does touch, they collapse. They get into her space. King with the foul, around and out by Hidalgo, makes 80%. McDonald's All-American spotlight. 2023 McDonald's All-American. Out of Haddonfield, New Jersey. And makes one of two. And just plays with so much energy. Constantly trying to hawk the basketball. Amor can't connect. And a rebound by Hidalgo. And only 5-6, but she also gets six rebounds a game. She's a terrific defensive rebounder. Westbelt back out to the guard. Got a wide open look. Loki's trying to smooth out their offense. Got to be a lot of touches from number 33 and number five. And again, you see where they're running offense all the way out in the logo. So we're talking 10 to 12 feet from the three point line. Now you made that point early, and it's a great one. It's happened over and over again. That three, no. Kitley went for the rebound. And a loose ball, and the Irish pry free. The doggo open floor, finds Citron. She's got another one. A three-pointer, and a timeout, Virginia Tech. Heads up play. Hannah Hidalgo understanding we need to get Sonia Citron involved in this ball game. She sees her running the lane in transition, delivers the pass on time, on target, and Citron knocks down the three. 76 all, Notre Dame a chance to win it. Citron will inbound. Miles for the win! But we wanted to remind you, we see the highlights of what Olivia Miles can do, and you've had a different perspective this year sitting out with injury. Tell me what you're seeing from your team right now defensively. You get a best seat in the house. I know, just straight passion. You know, we're locked in. We're locked into the scout. Um, our team is just being there for each other. You know, when one person gets beat, we're right there. So they're just they're being trustworthy, and that's the biggest thing for us. 
Liz Kitley, Georgia Amar, one of the best duos in college basketball. You're making them inefficient right now. How do you think the game plan has served that? Yeah, you know, they were the focus, um, as they should be. You know, they're great players, so um, they can get their team going. So they're, they were the focus. So just locking in on them and then, you know, making sure we're not, you know, losing it on, on other people. Um, we're doing that really well right now. I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, but I keep thinking about next year and having you and Hannah Hidalgo on the floor together. How do you look at what, what you two could do in kind of a magical way? Yeah, I mean, as you see in this game, she, she's playing incredible. Um, she's a leader. You know, she's doing, she's doing everything she needs to do right now. And so I'm just excited to play with her. You know, she's an energy player and, and just so aggressive. And, you know, she's, she's just fun to be around. Okay, that's my resume tape for you for ESPN when you're done playing basketball. I just think you're going to be a phenomenal analyst one day. Thank you. We made it happen here thank today. You, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I could listen to Olivia talk basketball all night, I Yeah, think. no doubt about it. She's terrific. Notre Dame with a 14-point lead. The Hokies trying to find a way to cut in. They have not found the formula yet tonight here in South Bend. Amor might be the answer and knocks down two. Well, it's important for at least one of Georgia Amor or Elizabeth Kitley to get going on the offensive end of the floor. They're going to demand a lot of attention individually, and if they can start collectively finding ways to get high percentage looks. West Bell turns and fires, not there. See if the tide is turning for the Hokies. Back to the baseline. Gives it up for the long jumper, and that's going to be swished in by Baker. 6-2 freshman. Father Vin Baker played 15 years in the NBA. Talent running in the family. Amor will knock that one out. What an ESPN women's basketball triple header we have for you Sunday. The final games of the regular season. South Carolina looking to make history and finish undefeated. They square off against Tennessee at noon Eastern. Then number 17, Notre Dame taking on number 22, Louisville. And the afternoon capped off with a rivalry game between Duke and North Carolina. All of that coming up. Triple header on Sunday. Citron with an airborne pass, and it's picked off. Stolen by Eck. Amor really taking it on her shoulders here. Can't hit it. The Hidalgo out in front. And we'll draw the foul as she goes down. Five minutes to go in the third. Once again for the Hokies, the opportunity to outright clinch the ACC regular championship tonight. Yeah, and it's, it's a huge opportunity for this team and this program that's had a lot of firsts since George A. Moore and Elizabeth Kitley stepped foot on campus. Hidalgo to penetrate and pop, and a good stop. At least temporarily. You got to do more than that, though. Yeah, I mean, there are just some people who have an instinct and a nose for the ball, and she quickly found it and was able to get the second effort. Just 17. Averaging 24. Amor looking for the answer and does. Well, she's been a different player here in this third quarter. Well, she has, and the Irish trying to keep her left, keep her from utilizing the screen. I like the way that Liz Kitley's coming up flat and allowing Georgia Amor to dictate which direction she goes. Amor with 13. West Bell's fall away is short. And King with a rebound. And here come the Hokies down 46-37. Liz Kitley, the All-American, has been very quiet in this quarter. She comes up high, set the screen. And now you got the mismatch. This is exactly what Kenny Brooks wanted. Eck, yes, a three-pointer. That brings on a timeout for Notre Dame. Hey, two of the best point guards in the country going at it here tonight. Hannah Hidalgo and the Irish stays after it with the second effort. And Georgia Amor, sweet on the pull-up. Nothing but the bottom of the net. What drives me is my competitive spirit. Uh, I definitely love to get out there and compete and win. And it means more being able to do it with a group that I love so much uh, in Virginia Tech. And every night that we get an opportunity to go out and play together is a fun one for me and I want to take advantage of it. That was a wooden watch brought to you by Principal Liz Kitley. And right now it's Georgia Amor putting the Hokies on her shoulders, but you put these two together, their tenure, 
30 win season ACC tournament title going to the final four number one seed in the NCAA tournament they have accomplished much and talking to Kenny Brooks about those two and what they meant to this program he said I'd have to write a book from day one they've changed the mentality the projection and the perception of our program Okies can get a little bit closer Amor, you can tell she is hunting for a shot. Gives it up here. Kitley with a shot clock down to nine. Gets to the lane. And a whistle. Notre Dame with a foul. Kylie Watson as we go to Holly. Well, you talked about what Kitley and Amor have done in their career, but they want more. After that epic run to the Final Four last year, they were both so anxious to improve that the coach had to call them in separately and say, okay, here's what we're going to do. Here's the plan. And that was in April, just weeks after that Final Four run. He said he talked to them about improving their mind. There's only so much they can improve physically, but they have got to improve their mindset. And you saw it right there. You see they assist on 70% of Virginia Tech's points that far. That is the mindset. We are going to own this. And Liz Kitley in that moment just there, she was not about to be denied and drew the foul. You see the mindset has improved for those two this year. And the poise. The poise under pressure. They've been in these situations before. They understand what it takes. They don't get rattled. Well, spelled off for Hidalgo on the drive and a foul. And a freshman headed to the line. So the lead has dwindled from 14 down to four here for the Irish. Virginia Tech last had a lead when it was 16 to 15. So it's been a long time. They've been chasing most of the night. Well, early in this third quarter, the pace is much more in favor of the Hokies. The Irish in the first half had it out. They had 22 points in the paint. A lot of those were in transition. They were creating offense from their defense. Much more disciplined and poised in the second half for the Hokies. It all going 80% foul shooter. And that's going to be in and out. A fight for the rebound. And Kitley will draw the foul. Foul here against Notre Dame. And they're going to get number 21, Matty Westbell, for the personal. Battling for that rebound. It'll be her first. Amor kicks it out. Baker launching. That didn't touch anything. Bransford, tough drive. Kenley just stayed home and ripped it free. Amor again, a determined shot. That won't fall. Kitley getting underneath that iron. They kick it out here for King. Five-point lead for Notre Dame here in the third quarter. On their home floor in front of a big crowd. Oh, great cut. And Citron wriggling free for two. And a terrific pass. Yes, it absolutely was. Get the defense to shift. They're in that 2-3 zone. You know you've got a little and Georgia Amor on the backside. That was terrific execution. And at 44 before we start the fourth. Out of the double, loose ball again. Notre Dame once again gets to it very quickly. They've been doing that all night. Yes, their activity level, multiple levels of effort. Hidalgo will draw the foul. Amor trying to stay in front of her. That is one tough task. It absolutely is. And we're going to talk about the execution. We're going to keep an eye on Sony Citron right here on the backside. So Notre Dame in against this 2-3 zone. Freeze it right there. Okay, everybody shifted. You see the backside. Georgia Amor didn't recognize it quickly enough. And Sonia Citron, that was perfect timing. Terrific execution. So Georgia Amor, her second foul to put Hidalgo to the line. She came in 20 points away from the ACC rookie scoring record. She's already broken the Notre Dame freshman scoring and steals records. Came into this one with 128 steals. A school record. Unable to hit at the line. 49 to 42, Notre Dame. Amor 
free in the paint. Try to swoop that pass. Picked off. Citra will scoop it in. And Notre Dame showing a little more offensive life again. And it's been happening all night from their defense. Well, those are instincts that you just can't teach right there that Hannah Hidalgo did. She's beat in the play. She understands where the ball is going, and she's able to take it away. Back head down. Yes, she gets two. Two for one opportunity. Hannah Hidalgo talking about it. West Bell outside. Twelve to get off a shot here for Notre Dame. Shot clock down to six. Hidalgo wants it. Stops, pops, and draws the foul. And she's just a handful. Maybe a little shaken up there. Or winded. Uh, she, she ball hawks 94 feet defensively. She's in every rotation, and she continues to drive the basketball in transition. Right here, again, just initiating contact. George Amore comes up, gets her right across the, the forearm. I mean, she exerts a lot of energy. She is always in constant motion. 19 and counting, three steals, again, averaging five steals a game. That's just an average performance. And another record here, yep. As she hits both foul shots, exceptional at that line. 660 points, the most by a freshman in ACC history for Hannah Hidalgo. The records keep on coming too. So the Hokies with a lot of work to do as we get set for the fourth quarter. Amor straight on and makes it a little bit easier with a triple. And that's it at the horn as they creep to it in six. The LIV joining Holly when we come back. Hidalgo with 20 as we get set for the fourth. 53-47, Notre Dame leading Virginia Tech. And Holly Rowe joined by Coach Ivy. Well, Coach, how did your team come out from the very beginning of this game and disrupt a very efficient Virginia Tech team? Well, I thought we were locked in. We wanted to feed off the energy of this crowd. We haven't started games well, so that was a big emphasis for us today. Hannah Hidalgo just set the ACC record for the most points in a season by a freshman. She just seems like she belongs. How do you describe what it's like watching her out here? I'm like watching in poetry in motion. She's blossoming in front of my eyes, in front of everyone's eyes. She's a competitor. She is a dog, and, I, and she loves the stage. I'm, so I'm super proud of her. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Hey, she, she mentioned it. Hannah Hidalgo is a dog. Just look at the way she pressures the ball. She never stops moving. Her feet are moving. Just when you think she's out of the play, great instincts and understanding of where the ball is getting to and is able to start this Notre Dame break because of her defense. I don't know if there's a higher compliment than to call a player a dog. There is not. 20.7 <laughs> rebounds, three assists, three steals. You know, Caitlin Clark has announced she has declared for the WNBA draft. So, you know, we're looking for another star, you know, to step up on that stage. Yeah. And tonight we're watching one who can do it. Hidalgo again, spins it in. A dynamic move for two more in 22 points. Eight for 17 shooting. She's had an answer all night. Amor has been answering back since halftime. Handing off for Eck. She will drive it and left it short. Kitley battling for the rebound, couldn't hang on. And again, the last time the Hokies led it was 16 to 15. Citron takes it. Watson in the paint, spinning, and that's a violation. And the lane too long. She's just so fast in transition. You can't catch up with her. You can't keep her in front of you. This time she finishes with the offhand. Fast break points. Notre Dame is flat dominated, 18 to two. Two high scoring, high octane offenses. 
Back outside the three. Shot clock to five. Amor got a look. Difficult angle. It won't drop. In the corner, Bransford. Westbelt shot short. And Kitley there for the rebound. This Kitley averaging 12 rebounds a game. She's had a difficult night, though. Just eight points. Plenty of time to do something about that, though. With eight minutes to go. She gets the entry. Fall away. A lot of iron, but it won't fall. The Kidley's having to work for every touch. Not just every shot, every touch. The level of physicality. You know, the Irish talking to them and communicating their switches. Keeping her uncomfortable. Hidalgo stops, scoops it, that rolls away, she grabs her miss. And came, came away with a huge smile on her face. Relentless. Relentless. Getting an ovation here from the crowd at South Bend for that determination and that grit. A pull-up pop, yes, and it leads to a basket for Sonia Citron. Every possession is so important. Hannah Hidalgo getting her team multiple possessions. Second half, Citron with 11. You said at the break that was going to be the difference in the game. Swished in on a nice touch by King. That's how the game started. And Kayla King has, has not shot the ball as well as we're typically used to seeing her shoot it from the three-point line. And this is a Virginia Tech Hokie team that in order to get back to that Final Four, they're going to need her to find that rhythm. Citron made a smart choice there to shoot it. The defender bowed down, and she got 13 points. What a second half for her. And really, these last three ball games, you started to see Citron, Westbelt, and Hidalgo come together from a chemistry and production standpoint. Notre Dame by nine. King up top, Eck. It was a pretty good look. Nadalgo, by the way, with her seventh double double, 22 points, 11 rebounds. And she'll set it up now for the Fighting Irish. And the play is her. And a fight for the rebound underneath. A tie up on the play. Possession arrow will keep it on this end for Notre Dame. And two of the top teams in the Big 12 square off Saturday, our ABC men's basketball feature matchup. Number seven, Kansas, up against number 15, Baylor. Coverage beginning at 1 o'clock Eastern, noon Central on ABC. Notre Dame to inbound. Hidalgo will do the honors. Nineteen on the shot clock. Quick inbound. Westbelt denied by Kitley. All-American with the rejection. Coming up on five and a half to play here at Purcell Pavilion. Left-handed, and that's going to be denied on the other end. A block by Watson. In the corner, that won't drop. The Wolf with a miss. Up front, here's Eck. Trying to pull her way through. Hit the deck, rebounded away by Notre Dame. And once again, the crowd springing to life here in South Bend, Indiana. And again, you see the growth of Hannah Hidalgo getting everybody set, making sure they get to execute using time and score. Kitley with the block, and she has four. Right, we talk a lot about Hannah Hidalgo's skill set, but there's a lot that goes into this mindset, being relentless on the offensive glass, saving possessions for her team, and yeah, she loves it. Dream 
right, Steph, want to get your thoughts on the February 29 reveal now. Stanford, Texas, NC State, Indiana, Region 3, Region 4, UCLA, Virginia Tech, UConn, and Gonzaga. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little surprised that Texas holding on to that number two, but this is the surprise region for me. You look at Albany, South Carolina, Carolina and Iowa in the same region? Uh, I don't, don't know think about so. that. I don't think so. And how about those Buckeyes? Big Ten continues to talk about Iowa, and they just continue to win. Well, about four minutes to go here. Hokies with work to be done, and they do get it to Kitley for the bucket. She's had a quiet night by her standards, only 10 points. Her season low was six against Syracuse. They leave a wide open shooter, but Citron can't hit it. And a seven point lead for the Irish, but the Hokies with the ball. Just continuing with the defensive intensity and execution. Nothing coming easy for Virginia Tech. And all the fighting through that screen, but that's a veteran Ooh. shot right there. You talk about an almost impossible angle by Amor to get it to go. She has 18. And off the glass, and the Hokies come with this three quarter court pressure. But again, the growth right here. Neil Ivey talking about poise from Hannah Hidalgo and learning time and score situations. Well, she said, with all these big games coming up, of course, with Westbelt firing and switching it in, she's got an answer. She's had a great night. She's had a terrific night. The most experienced player on the floor, all four seasons in the LIV system, understands each and every moment. So under three. And a foul on the deck before the shot, so no basket. 62-54 Notre Dame. And coming up next on ESPN2, Georgia taking on Angel Reese and number nine, LSU. That's in Athens, Georgia. One of the prettiest campuses in the country. Notre Dame time and time again able to fire back after a Hokies big shot. Hokies close to four points. But no closer in the second half. And again, they haven't led since it was 16 to 15. Hidalgo running a little clock. Westfeld high. Tips. Hidalgo has it. Shot clock dwindles down to seven. Oh, great pass inside. Central with a finish, but that's an outstanding give by the freshman. And how about the awareness? Sonia Citron, terrific in her off-ball cutting. She knows Hannah Hidalgo will find her. And a whistle, five assists for her, 22 points and 11 rebounds. I mean, this is just ridiculous. Great cut by Sonia Citron, finding the open area. Hidalgo reads it, delivers it. It's a shame she doesn't enjoy playing basketball. <laughs> That's the only thing. You never, never see her smiling. Uh, yeah. A great young player on a big stage again tonight, lighting it up. Kitley, by the way, moving into the number two spot in the ACC career scoring list, passing Elena Beard and trailing only Barbara Kennedy with 3,113 points at Clemson. She's had kind of a rough night by her great standards. And we are under two minutes to play. They all go again. She's been dazzling tonight, got the pass free. Citron will lean in, flipped it up there, and it rolls away. And Virginia Tech, let's take a look. 146 to go. Now the Hokies battling for the loose ball there. 64-56. Yeah, they're gonna go to the monitor here. Yeah, you want to make sure you want to make sure you get it right. The out of bounds play is under review. The call on the floor is white. The call on the floor is Hokies ball. Take a look. So Amor begging off there, making sure not to reach for it. it certainly hit Maddie Westbelt's hand. The question is, 
as Olivia Summy will get it afterwards on the follow through. It's got to be clear and conclusive. Joe Vasily over there at the monitor with 146 to go. And made the call on the floor that the Hokies would have the ball. Will that get overturned? And that's a tough one right there. Yeah, what's your final thought on that? Uh, I'm not sure that it's clear and conclusive enough to change it. Right. I didn't really see a change in the spin on the ball. Under two minutes going to the monitor. On the deflection out of bounds. Virginia Tech with an opportunity to win the ACC outright tonight. Here's another look. See both well, right there. That looks like Samia. Right at the end. If it's off Samuel, it'll be Notre Dame ball. And they need everything they can get here, trailing 64 56. So we'll see if this gets overturned. Big call. When we look at it again, I think you're probably right that the last fingertip to touch it. It was Olivia Summiel, the 6 2 grad. Well, our slow mo angle was the best one. Another look. Yeah. This is the one right here. Summiel's the hand in the middle. Hits West Belt, but right there. That looks like it's off of Olivia Summiel. I would agree. Brutally tough call. Oh, yeah, it is. But kudos to the officiating crew for, for knowing and understanding the moment and wanting to get it right. So, we'll see what they come up with here. We have a minute 46 to go in what has been a fast moving game. And Notre Dame getting behind their fantastic freshman, Hannah Hidalgo has been leading most of the contest and it will be Notre Dame ball and I think they got that right they did they absolutely did took their time did their due diligence so Hidalgo will put it in now for the Fighting Irish as they try to improve to 12 and 5 in the ACC Irish with plenty to play for there in the fight for one of the top four spots in the upcoming ACC tournament, Greensboro. Hokies, regardless of tonight, already the number one seed. Deep in the corner, Bransford and pushed out. 143 to go. And King with her fourth. Yeah, Kayla King, you can see her hands right on the back of KK Bransford. That was an easy one. Yeah, it was a lot easier than the tip. <laughs> yes. That's for sure. Poked away and a loose ball. Citron comes free with it across midcourt and a whistle. Mark Freeman court side here. 64 56. A lot of very interested partners. Watching this game. And his two daughters there, too. Inbounded for Hidalgo and fouled. The foul on Carly Wenzel. One thirty-six to go. Kenny Brooks knowing his team has a lot of fouls to give. Wenzel another one. Dame, a veteran team, seven seniors or grads. And they have certainly played like it since about midway through that first quarter when they took command of the game. Hidalgo getting free. Gets it ahead on the drive and up and in by Citron. And you can't foul her if you can't catch her, right? True enough. Timeout, Hokies. 
Back to a 10 point lead for Notre Dame. Citron with 17. Investment opportunities are everywhere you turn. But at T. Rowe Price, we're letting curiosity light the way, asking smart questions about opportunities like advances in healthcare and how these innovations will create a healthier world tomorrow. Better questions, better outcomes. It's the final game, folks. This one wins the series. Struck out with the cheap seats? Important things aren't worth compromising. At Farmers, we offer both quality insurance and great savings. Here, take mine. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Hannah Hidalgo leading the way tonight for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. She's had a great ball game and she loves, loves the big stage. She absolutely does. She shines the brightest in these moments. Well, the Hokies need a bit of a miracle. That pass loose in the paint. Big scramble for that. And the Hokies have the possession arrow. But trailing by 10. Hidalgo 22 points, 11 rebounds, six assists, and three steals. And Maddie Westbell, not an unsung hero. She's been great tonight with 19 points and nine rebounds. Second effort. King will let it rip. That won't fall. We're inside a minute. Another loose ball comes to the Irish. Up for West Bell and another whistle with 51.6 to play. And Notre Dame closing in on a W and a big one against the number five team in the country. Absolutely. Now, this has been a Notre Dame team that has battled, you mentioned it before, lots of injuries. They, they haven't had their core group together for, and they're finally starting to peak at the right time. Now, they go on the road and, and get a big gut check win at Duke. And they have been flying high ever since. Yeah, they look over the course of their season. They lost at Syracuse by five and in North Carolina by four. That's how close they were to winning 16 consecutive games in the heart of the season. And Andrews that, played a big role. And in that Notre Dame or in that um, North Carolina game, Matty Westfield wasn't in that matchup as well. 68 56 timeout Hokies. So we'll check out those standings in the ACC. Virginia Tech. 51 seconds away from dropping one here to the Fighting Irish. Notre Dame about to improve to 12 and 5. And the two stars for the Hokies. They were locked up pretty good for long stretches by Notre Dame. Just an outstanding defensive effort by this fighting Irish team. Nothing came easy. Everything was difficult. Execution of the game plan was on point, nearly perfect. That's a lot of red dots. Hey, Maureen Kelly, 30 points, but 11 for 33. Rest of the team, only 26 points. And, and that's what you want to do when you're playing two great players. You just want to make them make difficult shots, make them work for everything that they get. And they certainly have had to work tonight. Well, this evening, very difficult road environment to come to South Bend. And a team in Notre Dame that could be really dangerous from here on out, right? Well, and a fighting Irish team that's fighting to get into that top four for the double bye, and that's not a good foul right there no. for Sonia Citron. And she's going to shoot three, eh, more well. But also to get home court advantage in the NCAA tournament. Opportunity here with a win against Virginia Tech, and then they come back and they play in Louisville. In the next game, heading before heading to the ACC tournament. And we're so reliable at the line, typically 90%, missing the first one. Dad on hand, mom as well, coming on the road. Originally, of course, from Australia. Talk about coming on the road. She makes two out of three. 20 points for Georgia tonight. But that only makes it a 10 point game and the pressure here for the Hokies and they are going to continue to foul and send Hidalgo to the line trying to add to her outstanding stats this evening.
And that'll be number five on King. And Hidalgo to the other end to shoot. Set the record tonight for ACC rookie scoring in a single season. She was sensational with that very first game against South Carolina. First college game. She had 31 at 34 against UConn. She shows up. Can't hit the first one. And Coach Ivo was asked the question this week what do you want to see her do in terms of improvement the rest of the way? And as you said, she said, it's all about poise now. That's what I tell her every single day because the games are just going to get more and more important. And there was growth certainly tonight in terms of poise. Poise and game management, time and score situations, understanding when to slow it down and execute offense, understanding when to speed it up and take advantage in transition. Now you can tell that these two have a special relationship, that, that they, they watch film together after every ball game, and the growth and maturity of Hannah Hidalgo has been on full display here tonight. So much fun to see a freshman who shows up in total command of the floor, mm -hmm. you know, and knows exactly what she does. Not good, but great. Right out of the shoot. Yeah, and, and also has a wonderful personality. No, no doubt about it. And when you're a point guard who's being coached by an absolute star of a point guard, you, know, you have that synergy. You have that understanding. You trust what comes out of Neil Ivey's mouth, and, and you apply it. Certainly not the only great freshman, but tonight 12 rebounds, by the way, a career high. A floater off the iron by Amor. And the Hokies backing off now. And the crowd rising at Purcell Pavilion. This was an impressive win for Notre Dame. And a big time W over a team that went to the Final Four last year, may yet again. Citron getting in close for two more. She was great in the second half. 21 points and all of them in the second half. Notre Dame absolutely dictating on both ends of the floor the entire ball game. They are certainly peaking at the right time. And that's the final horn. Notre Dame wins it. 71 to 58 over Virginia Tech, keeping the Hokies from outright clinching the ACC regular season championship here tonight. And what a terrific effort on both ends of the floor. Hannah Hidalgo certainly set the tone for the Irish on the defensive end, but an absolute team effort to lock down one of the best duos in the country. Anna Hidalgo, a spectacular performance with her head coach. And let's go to Holly. Well, Coach, this was a scouting report win. This was masterful the way you disrupted Virginia Tech. How would you describe how your defense set the tone early? Well, that was what we wanted to do today. We wanted to start with our defense. And it's credit to this one. It's a credit to our entire team, how locked in they were. Um, we have an incredible fan base, and we just wanted to play for them today, and I'm so proud of them. Hannah Hidalgo is doing stuff we've never seen before, a new freshman record in the ACC. How do you describe what you're watching right next to you every day? Just magical. You know, her middle name is Grace, God's Grace. Um, she's a gift, and she loves this game. She has passion. She plays for me, and I'm so grateful to be her coach. You came here because you wanted to get coached hard. How has this woman brought out the best in you, Hannah? Yeah, Coach Ivy is always on me. Every practice, we're always watching film, and, and I love it because she wants me to be great. The hustle tonight, every loose ball, every 50-50 ball, you were everywhere, a career high in rebounds. How would you describe what's inside of you that brings out the best? Yeah, it's just a God-given talent. Like Coach Ivy said, I'm a double portion of grace. My first name means grace, so God has just blessed me with a talent. I just come out here every day and just give God the Lord. What does it mean to you to be the best freshman ever in the ACC? Is that cool to you? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, again, I'm just blessed by Christ. All right, double dose of grace. And I'm going to say triple dose of grace. Thank you, lady. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. 71-58 the final. Notre Dame rolling here tonight. You know, Caitlin Clark is about to step aside and head off to the WNBA, but there are other young stars in the sky. We watched one here tonight. Anna Hidalgo, spectacular as we send it back to the studio. Kelsey, Gray, and Charlie as we say so long from the